Hi there, today uh, we'd like to introduce our new, brand new board game, Catacombs. It's from Sands of Time Games, and uh, I'll just say this at the start. If you want more information about this game, you can go to our website, sandsoftimegames.com, and there's a link on there uh, to our page on Board Game Geek as well, so you can get some sense of what other people think about the game as well. Um, right now, we'd just like to talk a little bit about the things you're going to get with the game, and then run through uh, a couple rounds of play so you get a sense of how the game works. Uh, here on the table are all the things that come uh, with catacombs. There are, as you can see, a lot of components. There's 68 pieces, um, wooden pieces, that are mostly used as monsters and heroes and uh, some tracking cubes and things like that. There are several decks of cards. There's um, a deck of cards that represents money that the heroes collect for slaying the monsters. There's a deck of reference cards about the monsters and their their strength, uh, how much gold you get when you kill them, and their powers. Um, there's a deck of item cards that the heroes can buy in the dungeon shop. There are, um, is, a, is a deck of spell cards that the wizard can use uh, to cast spells. And then, of course, there's a deck of room cards which represent all of the rooms that the heroes will uh, battle through in order to get to the uh, Lord of the Catacombs at the end. Um, there's 38 cards, and these 38 cards represent um, six different game boards with different configurations of obstacles and different um, sort of monster setups and things like that on them. And then, of course, there are um, player mats, which have information about all the different heroes. There's the Barbarian, the Thief, the Elf, the Wizard, and then the four different um, Catacomb Lords that you could fight. There's the Lish, the Sorcerer, the Gorgon, and the Dragon. So, what we have... Oh, and of course, there's a rulebook. <laughs> And uh, what we have here is a sort of representation of a game in progress. Um, here, down the side, these are the different rooms that the players have been um, fighting through. And they're almost to the end, and they're at this room now. And what would happen is you would be going through, and you would turn this card over, and you'd see, okay, it's uh, Vale's Mance. And the overseer would get the appropriate board out of the pile place it here, place all these obstacles in the holes, and then he would collect the uh, monsters that are shown on the card. So since I'm playing the Overseer today, I have to get three centaurs, two minotaurs, and a giant scorpion. And then what you can do as well is uh, get the monster reference cards out so everybody uh, can see what the monsters are, what they're capable of. So here you've got the giant scorpion. Uh, he's got a special power. He does a uh, Critical damage on a melee shot just means he does two damage instead of one. You have a centaur, which is also pretty powerful. He gets to do a melee shot and then immediately follow it with a missile shot. And then the minotaur, he just does the regular melee shot, but he has a retaliation ability. And I'm sure we'll see that as we uh, play out. So the next thing that happens on the game board is that the, um, the players... At, I guess I should mention it's a game for uh, two to five people. It's an asymmetrical co-op game, so there's one overseer, as I mentioned, that's who I'm playing today, and there can be from one to four um, players representing the heroes of the game. So the, the heroes then place their characters in their start zone. And uh, today, Ryan is just, he's playing all the characters. So you know, set them all up. And then the overseer gets to set up all of uh, his pieces down in his zone. All right, I can choose whichever hero I want to want to shoot whatever they want. So um, I'm going to start with the barbarian though first because he's got a rage attack, and I want to want to see how that works first. So I'm going to reduce my rage counter by one, and he gets four consecutive melee uh, shots with this action. So let me see. I'm going to go right in the middle here. Ah, I missed, but I get another one. And I'll hit that time. So okay, that... so the Minotaur has a retaliation ability, which just means he gets to hit back right away. So, first of all, he takes damage from the Barbarian's attack. So you just flip the piece over, and uh, you can see one side is white, one side is black. So that just indicates he's taking some damage, and then he gets to make a shot back. And the Barbarian loses a health. 
All right, so I still got two more actions in this, uh, two more melee shots here. So I'm going to put the giant scorpion there, knock him off the board. Okay, so he'll take a point of damage, and if any piece comes off the board, all you need to do is just move it back. And I'm going to push a tough shot here, but let's see. Ah, I missed that. So I'm going to be incapacitated after the, uh, the rage attack, which means he will miss his next turn recovering from that action. Okay, next up, um, I'm going to get the thief in here and see if she can uh, roll up the metal here. Ah, she missed. Uh, use the elf to fire an arrow here, another missile shot. There we go. So, kill the bar. Uh, the minerf takes another shot, hit point of damage, and he is now destroyed and goes onto my, my sheet. And I can, at the end of the round, I'll get gold for killing him like that. And the last one I've got is the wizard. And what am I going to do with the wizard here? I'm going to uh, use a shield spell and try and uh, protect my barbarian here. So I discard the shield card and put the shield token down. I'm going to put it right in there to try and protect him. Okay. So now it's my turn again. Alright. He's not... Probably not going to be able to hit him, so I'll just kind of power my way through. See if we can break that up a little bit. Um, try to get the Minotaur out of this corner. That's not too bad. And now the Centaurs are going to kind of roll in and see what they can do. So this guy goes up, didn't hit anybody, but remember he gets to take a melee shot and then a missile shot. Ooh, and missed. That was a bad shot. And these other Centaurs will roll in with him. And when you're taking a shot, you just kind of place it around the character, which kind of helps if you need to shoot it from behind somebody like that. Oh, missed again. And actually, we'll go in here and take a shot back this way and do a point of damage to him. So I reduced my uh, health track by one. I take and a shot. Now it's the hero's turn again. All right. So uh, let's see what I can do here. So the Barbarian is, is basically done his action because he was incapacitated last round. I want to get rid of that. Oh, did you move the giant scorpion? Oh, you did, didn't you? Yeah, that's what moved so the shield. So I'm going to uh, just bring a melee shot. Even though she can fire an arrow, I'm just going to do the melee shot to uh, take out another one here. So that's it's two she's killed this board. And um, I'm going to use a fireball spell here for the wizard, which gets him the fireball token. Let's see. I'm lucky. I may be able to hit both of them here, but probably not. Ah, just got the one. And he flips over. And he flips over. Okay. Flip one. Um, so the last one I got is the thief, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I don't want to really hit that minotaur because it's going to get the retaliation, but I think I got to. So I'm just going to do that. And I don't think the minotaur can hit back, but he'll just take his shot. Use it to do his advantage. Right, kind of right. Right. Because yeah. he took damage. All right, and the overseer's back up. All right. Can I move to this elf? So he does a point of damage, and he can also to do a point of damage to the barbarian. The barbarian has the most health, so it's always handy to. Oh, I missed. <laughs> of course. Try to take him out when you can. Um. Some hits on the wizard. Oh, that's already hit on him. Hit there, and make sure my system. Hit wizard too, and he'll take his. There we go. And basically, that's. How catacombs works. Uh, you just keep playing the room out um, until one side or the other is completely destroyed. Typically, of course, it'll be the overseer's side. We've got several rooms to go through here, and um, you know if the heroes are lucky, they'll make it as far as the healer, and they can recover some of their health points. And as well, they can make it to the merchant and buy some more items uh, to upgrade their skills and their powers. Please visit Sands of Time Games. Dot com. Thank you very much.